In this tutorial, I'm gonna be showing you how I created one of these Behance case studies for some client work. So first up, I'm gonna jump into Behance real quick. And you can see here, I've got my logo folios and I've got a couple of these case studies here. So you can see, for example, I've got one here, which is super cool. And I've got some other client work. These are all real world clients, which is super awesome. And they just got mock-ups. For this one, the Craft Whiskey Society, you can see all the content there. And then I've got these really cool mock-ups that I did and they just look amazing. I've been getting a lot of feedback and, and cool views. So this is one way how to go about creating a case study. So typically what I do is once I'm finished with a project, so this is the project files, you can see, I will just go to project and locate it. I typically make a folder called case study, right? And then within this folder, I start to create images 1920 by 1080 pixels. And then this allows me to get ready. So when I put the mockups or the designs, I can just put it on Behance or on my website. If I also go to my website as well, and you can see here, if I scroll down, I've got my case study seed. So I'll click on the case study that I want. I'm gonna go to the Craft Whiskey Society. And because I already have this text, all I have to do is just copy this text and I can paste it in the Behance section when I'm ready. And you can see, I can upload these images to my website, to Behance, it works all the same. Once I have these files, um, typically I go to my final version of the logo file. So you can see I've got like a little style guide here, it was just for a logo. And then I start to create like logo versions in the different artboards. So you can see here, this artboard is 1920 by 1080 and I start to create a logo. I just show the logo basically in its simple form. And then in Photoshop, that's where I create my other mockups. So if I go to Adobe Bridge, I'll quickly show you some of the mockup packs. These are from Mockup Zone. So you can see some packaging stuff. If I, if I zoom in a little bit, you can see heaps of cool packaging things, boxes. These are really cool, even t-shirts. So I've got lots of lots of mockups, guys. Like it's crazy. If I go back and I go to Mammoth, let's check out some of these pack ones. So I've got like the food creator or packaging here. And if I go like show items in subfolders, you'll get you'll be able to see some of the cool stuff in here. So I'm just going to there. So you can see some of the stuff that's loading. So for example, I'm gonna press spacebar. You can see I use one of these bags for like the whiskey which is really cool. It just makes everything realistic, makes everything stand out. So when you invest in good mock-ups, then it's gonna be awesome. And if you want some cool mock-ups, I'll put a link in the description where you can get some bundles and design cuts, which is super awesome. So he's, they've got some cool packaging here, beautiful stuff, even <laughs> noodle stuff, which is cool. So that's where I get my pretty much mock-ups. I've got heaps of them. And then I start to customize them. So for this one, you can see I've got my Photoshop layers. So if I just close them, so I've got like uh, the glasses there, the pizza, the phone, with NRL there. So just create a realistic piece of content. Even the pizza was already part of the other packages. And then you can see in the coaster, if I go to the vector image, you can see here all it is is this logo here. So like I can, I added a bevel. So in order to make it like stick out with the shadow, I added a, if I just double click on the logo itself, you can see the settings here with the bevel and emboss, I added a depth, about 100%, a size three, smooth and an inner bevel. I also added a drop shadow as well. So you can see if I turn that off, you can see what it looks like. And this gives it like an embedded feel that it's like stamped inside the coaster there. And you can see I can turn that off and on, which is cool. For the other ones, you can see here's with the packaging. And this one, you can see that if I double click, it's just the logo pretty much on the file on that size on the front. And then I've added a logo in the back, which is really cool. And what I did there is I added a color burn in my layers panel and dropped the opacity to 20%. And this gives a nice look in the background. And then for the, you can see in the background there, I've got like this nice texture that came up with one of the packets as well. So it just makes it feel like it's premium, it's leather, it's really interesting. And then another one here with the style guide, you can see here, it's literally just a booklet with the 
image here, as you can see. So I, I copied this. If I go to Illustrator, I literally copy this and then I paste it inside the Photoshop file like this, as you can see. And then you just drop it in there and then you click save. Then obviously like I can add gold texture and silver and things, which is cool. But once you save that, then it loads it onto that space. And then the other side of the book, which is the landscape left page. I've got, if I double click on that, you can see this is what's on the left page and the right page is pretty much the same and you can turn it off and on there. And the cool thing about this is that I can also add like a background. So I added a marble texture and then I added a blue on top with a multiply. So you're just making everything come alive. You're making it more realistic and that's what you want to do. You want to make sure that everything feels real. And then once I'm happy with that, I typically go Control Shift Alt S or save for web. And I will save it as a JPEG, 90 quality is fine. You can put on hundred. And this is the size I save it at and I click save and I drop it into this folder here, into my case study. Then what I do, I pretty much go to Behance and then I can create a new project as you can see. And then I'll start to drop in these items that I created. So if I go back here, 2019 craft case study, and because I've already created all this, it just makes it a lot, saves a lot of time, makes it easier just to quickly drop in these mockups that I've created into that space. For the text section, typically what I do is I click text and then I go to my website. As I said, I'll copy and paste this. So down here into the text section, where, where did I put it? So if I click text, all right, here we go. And I've copy paste that. Then I'll start to just like make it bold, make it stand out. So you can add like little indents there. And I can make that black. I can also change the font as well. So maybe you want to go Dana header. You go paragraph. You can make this a subheader as well, like that. And I can also change the background color. So maybe what you do is you click on style on the right hand side, and I can drop it. And maybe I want to make have like this gray color or something. Yeah, you can make it other colors if you want. I can make it maybe a cream color, just to sort of match the craft whiskey which is cool and I can you know, click save. I can also adjust the content spacing as well. So maybe I want more spacing or I can make it tight. It's up to you. So 50 pixels, but you can see you'll get these white boxes here. And then typically I rearrange the project. You can also actually change the section on if you want it on the left or on the right. Typically I center it or leave it to the left like this, which is really cool. And then what I like to do is like, I like to rearrange. So I'll click this little blue button click reorder project and I'll drag the text to the top and click save new order. So now when they land on it, you've just got this basic text of like the purpose of the project, the goal, the objective, what was your role and the date and also the client name. Typically this is how I'll create that. But if I don't want to do it like this way, what I'll do, I'll probably go into illustrator, you know, and then I would create my own version of it. If I want to like be, Make it more interesting. And maybe like I want to add some of these like elements, you know? And then what if I wanted to add like this stroke? Delete that. In the font. Let me just select the font there. Make it a bit smaller. So this is when you can like have fun, use your design skills and you know, experiment, make it cool, make it awesome. And I'll show an example of some good case studies as well that from my friends that are on um, there. So this font, I'm going to change this. I'll go uniform medium. Just going to get rid of this text box. 
put it on its own one because it has space issues. So I can try it up. Um, then I can play around with the style, make it bold, just for contrast there, which is super, super awesome. And then maybe I want to like add something, a little element. Maybe I want to add like this icon in the background or something. I'll make it the same color as the back. So I'll press I for the eyedropper. And then what I can do is go to the transparency and click multiply. Right, which is cool. Adds like this subtle effect. I might go for the darker gold. Um, and then I'll drop the opacity down a little bit. Hopefully you guys can see that. I'll go like 40%. And obviously like I, I can do a clipping mask just really quick. I'm sure you guys know how to do clipping mask. I have a video on my channel about that. And then it just adds like a nice subtle detail. I might drop it to overpowering. So it just makes it more interesting. Start on the background. And then what I could do, I could save this as a JPEG. So save for web as you usually save it. Just gonna scale it down so you guys can see it in here. So JPEG 100% and then I can click save and I can save it in that case study folder. So if I go back, case study and call it um, project description. I'm going to jump back into Behance and then I can load the image in. And this just makes the design a lot more interesting. So I can click this, reorder project, drag it to the top there and save new order. And I literally created that less than five minutes. So instead of having it this simple, you can have it like this. It's more custom. You know, you can use the fonts, the logos, the style, and just makes it more interesting. And that's better than just doing it like this. And if you like want to delete things, I can just click and delete text and it should get rid of that section. And obviously you can edit some parts as well. But overall, that's how you create a Behance project with a case study. Make sure you highlight these areas first and then have really nice mockups to show the logo in detail or the messaging or the brand identity in whatever way you can. Then I can click continue or save it as a draft and come back to it later. And I like how in Behance you can click view or preview and it will show you how it's going to look like in real life. And if you want to mix it up. And then once again, you can always go to styles and like, you know, change things up. I can go on settings. What you want to do is you name the project. So I'll go Whiskey Craft Society. Make sure you put tags, logo design, whiskey, packaging. You can put up to 10. So use that, utilize that. Put Photoshop here. Oh, deleted it for some reason. Photoshop and Illustrator. And maybe InDesign, whatever you use. You can put graphic design, illustration. If you want to find other fields, you can find some things here. So logo design, I can go down here. Or even select typography, that's cool. Press done. And then once you're happy, I can edit the cover image and I can select a cover image and I can move this or I can like zoom in. Right, I can press crop. So it will just it will just select images you've already uploaded, or you can click the plus and add a new one. So if I want to add a specific one, maybe this one as an image, I can select that as my cover, um, and that's the thing that shows up. So I can use that one if I want. Then once you're happy, just press publish, and you're sweet to go. I want to press save for draft because I don't want to post it up, but. That's how you create the Behance project and it's gonna look amazing when you start to create a full grid. So thanks so much for watching, really appreciate it. And I hope you found something useful. Remember to smash the like button, it helps the algorithm. And also subscribe for more graphic design and branding content every week. Have an awesome one, talk to you soon.